So the next question is about how far is each base pair from the next one in DNA double helix model? Okay, so they are asking about the base pairs. So if we take a DNA model, okay, so here on nucleotide like A, T will be there and here I am just telling for the example. Okay, they are asking the distance between the uh, two base pairs. Okay, so we have already read about it. That is 3.4 Armstrong. Okay, so here they have uh, given the option in the nanometer. So actually 1 and strong will be equal to 0.1 nanometer. So if it is 3.4 and strong, then it is going to be 0.34 N. So here the correct option is D. So the next question is about if a double standard DNA has 20% of cytosine. Okay, so it is a double standard DNA. So C will be equal to 20%. Okay, what will be the percentage of adenine in it? Okay, fine. So we know that if C is equal to 20, obviously G is also going to be 20%. Right. So then G plus C will be equal to 40. Okay. So according to the Chargaff's rule, A plus T will be equal to G plus C. So now we know that G plus C is 40. So now we have to find A plus T. So 100 minus 40 it is a percentage, right? So now A plus T will be 60. So because 100 minus 40. Okay, so now A will be 30% and T will be 30% because it is a double standard DA. Okay, so the first, I mean the percentage will be equal to A plus T and G plus C. So here the correct option is, so actually what they have asked, they have asked the adenine, right? So A is 30%. So here the correct option is C. Into the next question. In DNA stand, the nucleotides are linked together. Yes. So here the nucleotides are linked together. They have given the bonds like glycosidic bond, phosphodiester bonds, peptide bonds, hydrogen bonds. So the peptide bonds will be coming in the amino acid. So it is not there. So hydrogen bonds will be equal to the nitrogen bases. That is adenine will be paired with the thymine with the help of two hydrogen bonds and uh, uh, vanine will be uh, paired with the cytosine with the help of three hydrogen bonds. So coming to the option A, uh, this glycosidic bond is a bond uh, attached to between the nitrogen bases and the pentose sugar, right? So option A is also wrong. Coming to the option B, phosphodiester bond. So see, let's consider this is the sugar. Okay, in the three dash group. Phosphate is attached. So from this again another sugar is attached. So this is how the phosphodiester is bond between the this is one nucleotide, this is one nucleotide between the nucleotides. Okay, so here the correct option is B. DNA replication is said to be semi-conservative because, yes, okay, one stand of DNA is newly synthesized while the other stand is conserved. Yes, so if you remember that Meselson and Stark experiments, so we have drawn the first isotope that is the N15, the red color. So finally, that red stand is always there in the fourth generation also. So actually, one stand will be always conserved. Okay, only one new stand is synthesized. Okay, let's see the other options also. Finally, we can find out the answer. Okay, B, both stands of DNA are newly synthesized. Wrong. It is wrong, right? So if there is an old stand, so if there is an old stand, one new stand is formed. Right. So coming to the option C, both stands of DNA are conserved. No. Coming to the option 
D. One strand of DNA is degraded. No, none of the DNA is not going to be degraded. While the other strand is newly synthesis. So here, the option A is right answer. The central dogma of molecular biology states that, yes, we have already read this many times. DNA to RNA and protein. This process is called transcription and this process is called translation. Fine. So let's see. DNA is transcribed into RNA which is then translated to protein C. Yes. So here coming to the option C they have it is wrong that is R actually DNA is transcribed. Okay that is also wrong. Proteins are transcribed into DNA. No, DNA is transcribed to RNA. That is also wrong. And proteins are transcribed into RNA. No, it is not at all. So here the correct option is A. Coming to the next question. Nucleic acid is a polymer of. So what do you mean by nucleic acid? Which is nothing but DNA and RNA. It's a nucleic acid. Right. We'll have this DNA now. It is a polymer of what? Okay, nucleoside. So, what do you mean by nucleoside? So, it is a nitrogen basis plus sugar. Okay, that is the nucleoside. So, in the nucleoside, there won't be phosphate group. Okay, then coming to the nitrogen basis, we know that adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Yes, the C option is phosphate and the D option is that is nucleotides which means everything that is phosphate, nitrogen bases and sugar, right? So, yes, that is the correct answer. And so, that is the DNA is made up of phosphate group, nitrogenous bases and also the pentose sugar. So, here the correct option is D. The components of nucleoside are, right now we have seen that, right? That is pentose sugar. Yes, come on, tell me the answer. Whether it is a phosphate or nitrogenous bases. Yes, nitrogenous basis. So, here the correct option is B. Adenine pairs with thymine. Okay. How many bonds? Yes, this nitrogen bases are attached by the hydrogen bonds. This adenine will be attached to thymine with the two hydrogen bonds and guanine will be attached with the cytosine with the three hydrogen bonds. So, here the correct option is 2. So, the option B. Yes, we know the nitrogen bases, right? Yes. What about this uracil? We know that adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Yes, obviously B is going to be the right answer. What about this uracil? Actually, I told you that DNA and RNA is also the nucleic acid. So, if we take a RNA, it consists of uracil instead of thymine. Okay. So, RNA will consist of adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. Okay, so this is the RNA. So, DNA consists of thymine, adenine, guanine and cytosine. Okay, so here the correct option is B. Yes, which statement about polynucleotide chain is not true? Yes, they have asked which is not true. Okay, let's see. Nucleoside has three components. We know that nucleoside has only two components. That is nitrogenous bases and pentose sugar. Okay, fine. Coming to the B, adenine, guanine or purines. Yes. Coming to the C, two nucleotides are joined by phosphodiester linkage to form dinucleotides. Yes, we know that. Coming to the C, I mean D, a polynucleotide has free, free phosphate moiety and OH at two opposite ends. Yes, so B, C and D is the correct thing about the polynucleotide chain. Option A is not true about the polynucleotide chain. Yes, so here the correct option is A. So the next question is about which of the following is not true or uh, DNA double helix structure. Okay. So, they are asking about which is not true. Okay. Two nucleotides have anti-parallel polarity. Yes, that is right. Bases in two strands are linked by hydrogen bonds. Yes, that is also right. 
two chains are coiled in a left-handed fashion. Actually, this is by the right-handed fashion. Okay, so if you make a thumbs up. Okay, so the right-handed structure will be like this, you know, so like this. So the left-handed will be like this. So this is left and this is right. Okay, so the pitch of the helix, yes, that is also right. So in the question they have asked, which is not true. So option C is the correct answer. The next question, when and who discovered double helical model of DNA? Identity the correct, identify the correct option. Okay, they have given the year also. Actually, this DNA double helical model was found in the year 1953. Okay. So here there are two options that is 1953. If we see the scientist name, this Franklin is have uh, found the X-ray uh, diffraction pattern of the DNA. So here the correct option is B, that is Watson and Crick model in the year 1953. So the next question, identify the incorrect statement regarding transforming principle. Okay, so it is about transforming principle. So actually, in olden days, uh, they don't know that DNA is uh, uh, carried or uh, genetic information. Okay, but they uh, knew that there are something that could cause bacteria to transform from one type to another type. Okay, so that is called as a transforming principle. So let me explain in brief. So this uh, transforming experiment conducted by a scientist called Griffith in year 1928. Okay, so he performed like series of experiment by selecting some two strains of bacteria. That is by the streptococcus pneumonia. That is streptococcus pneumonia. Okay, so it is the bacteria. So he took two strains of the streptococcus pneumonia. That is the first thing is XS3 type strain and R2 type strain. Okay, so he did this uh, experiment by injecting this bacteria in the mice. Okay, so first, the first thing he took yes strain. Okay, then he injected the strain in the mice, so the result is dead. Why it is dead? Because this S strain is virulent, okay, which is very dangerous. Okay, then the second thing he took R strain, okay. And then he injected again into another mice. Then this mice is survived. Okay, which means this R stain is non virulent. And the third thing, he took S strain and he did heat killed. So, which means heat killed in the sense. So, actually, uh, there will be a test tube. So, there will be some S strain. So, this is S strain. So, they will be heating this, you know, to kill that uh, organism. So, that is called as a heat killed S strain. And now, again, he injected in mice. Now, whether it may be dead or survived, actually, it is survived. Because it is heat killed, right? Then the fourth thing, he took a strain heat killed, I am writing as HK plus R strain. Now he injected in the mice, and now can you guess whether the mice is going to be died or survived? Actually, some of the mice died. That's very interesting, right? So if it took a strain, heat killed, the mice survived. But if we add this heat killed a strain with the R strain, some are died, right? So 
we can conclude that something is transforming from this R stain to the S stain to make it kill, to kill the mice. Right? Now let's come back to the question. So they are asking that which is incorrect statement. Right? So let's see the option A. Done by Frederick Drift in 1928. Yes, this is the correct option. Yes, uh, they have used Streptococcus bacteria. Obviously, that is also right. And the C option is, yes, string is non-virulent. So, I have already told you, this S strain is a virulent. Okay. So, now, experimental organism is mice. Yes. So, the incorrect statement is C. Now, let's go to the next question. Identify the incorrect statement regarding a uh, Hershey & Chase experiment. Yes, I have already explained you about the Hershey & Chase. So, in the Hershey & Chase, they have uh, uh, taken the bacteriophage, which is a virus, to infect the bacteria, right? So, now let's see the option one by one. Yes, option A is experiment proves that DNA is the genetic material. Yes. So, do you remember that? So, it is a bacteriophage. And we took two bacteriophage in that experiment, not we and Hershey and Chase, they took two bacteriophage. One isotope is coated in the protein coat and one is in the DNA, right? So that is coated. So finally, we found that DNA is moved from the bacteriophage to the infected bacteria. So now that this is the correct. So, they used bacteriophage. Obviously, this is the bacteriophage. Okay. Protein labeled with P32 and DNA with S34. No, it is wrong because they isotoped this DNA with the phosphate 32 and this protein coat with the sulfur 35. So, this is the wrong option. And then this bacteriophage is a virus. Yes, this is true. Now, the incorrect statement is the option C. Protein labeled with phosphate 32 and DNA with sulfate is the wrong option. Now, so I'm sorry, actually this P stands for phosphorus and this S stands for sulfur. So, they took a radioactive phosphorus and radioactive sulfur for this S experiment respectively. Now, the next question is yes. So, it's very interesting. So, if the number of base pairs in a double standard DNA is 20, okay. So, totally it has double standard 200, fine. And adenine is 60 and they are asking what is going to be the guanine. So, we know that from the Chargaff's rule, A plus G will be equal to T plus C, okay. So, this A will be equals to T. Okay, because A is going to pair with T time. Okay, and then G will be equals to C. Now, they are asking the G thing. So, now see the question. They are telling that uh, the number of base pairs in the double standard DNA is 200 actually. We can write it as A plus G plus T plus C. Okay, will be equal to 200. Fine. So, we know that. A will be equals to T. Fine. So, we know that A is 60. So, G and then instead of T, I am writing 60 again and C will be equal to 200. Okay. Now, 60 plus 60 is 120 plus. Already we know that G will be equal to C. Now, I am writing this as G plus G. Okay. I am writing this G here and Instead of C, I am writing G here because we have to find guanine here, right? So, this will be equal to 200. Now, I am writing this 2 G plus G as 2 G. That will be equal to 200. I am taking this 120 to this side. It will be minus 120. So, now 2 G will be equal to how much? 80. So, now G will be equal to 80 divided by 2 and G will be equal to Yes, 40. So, if you take the value of A, G, T and C, you will be getting 200. So, now here the correct option is B. It's 40. Clear? Let's move to the next question. 
identify the incorrect statement regarding dna fingerprinting so that this dna fingerprinting we have learned already in the satellite dna okay now we have to find so which is incorrect yes bulk dna forms a major peak yes it is true and then satellite dna is a rep repetitive dna yes so it is a type of repetitive dna satellite dna codes for proteins so i have already told you that this satellite dna usually does not translate or first of all transcribe or translate because what i mean by transcribe and translate we know already what is meant by transcription and translation so dna is converted into rna that process is called as a transcription and rna will be converted into protein that is called as a translation right so the satellite dna does not have the capability to code for the proteins so now this is the incorrect statement and then let's see the last option also mini satellite and micro satellite is a satellite dna obviously right so now here the correct option is c yes again we got a question so what will be the amount of guanine in a dna if the total amount of adenine and thymine in the dna is 45% okay again we have to write the chargaff's rule that is a plus g will be equal to t plus c okay so they have given the percentage of this adenine and thymine right again we can write the same thing we know that actually adenine will be equal to thymine and guanine will be equal to cytosine so we'll equate this everything into 100 okay so we got this value right that is 45 so what they ask us to find they ask they ask us to find the guanine so actually they are given the value for a and t not for guanine so they have given the value for a and t okay that is 45 so then we have to write the remaining that is g plus c will be equal to 100 now here in the question they have asked the guanine so i am going to replace the c is equal to g so i am replacing and 45 will be equal plus 2g will be equal to 100 and 2g will be equal to 100 minus 45 so 2g will be equal to so 100 minus 45 it is 55 and g will be equal to 55 divided by 2 and now the answer is if you divide 55 divided by 2 you will be getting 27.5 okay yes now if you see the option so 27.5 stands in the c so c is the correct option yes coming to the next question the eukaryotic replication of dna is okay uh, they have given bidirectional with many origins and unidirectional with many origins and bidirectional with single origin. So, actually we know that in the eukaryotic organisms, so when it is going to happen DNA replication, there are many origins. Okay. So, if you see the options, there are two things. So, in A and B only, they have given many origins. So, obviously we know that many origins. So, if you see the replication, So, for example, the replication is here, the ORI region is present. So, that is the region in which the DNA replication is going to start, right? So, the replication is going to happen in this side also, okay? So, this side also and this side also, okay? So, here the correct option is bidirectional. That is a option, bidirectional with many origins, because the eukaryotic organism will have many origins and it is obviously uh, replication is going to happen in the two directions. That is bidirectional. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Select the incorrect matched pairs. Okay. We have to find which is incorrect. Okay. Yes. Option A, they have given purines. Okay. So purines, nitrogen bases, that is cytosine, thiamine and uracil. Okay. So we have learn this already that is there are two nitrogen bases nitrogenous bases that is purines and uh, pyrimidines so this purines will consist of adenine and guanine and pyrimidines consist of cytosine thiamine and uracil 
okay so if you see the option so they have given everything pyrimidines no it's it's not a purine so it is wrong okay now let's see the next options also so recombinant dna dna formed by joining the dna segment from two different sources yes it is the correct thing because re our dna technology is the very very uh, important thing in the uh, biotechnology okay so they will be taking this two organisms and they will be taking a some amount of dna from one organism and they will be joining that dna in an another dna of a different organism okay that is the recombinant dna technology yes our dna found in the ribosomes yes that is also true atp is the energy carrying compound in the cell yes that is also true so here the incorrect match to pair is a yes so the proof reading enzyme in dna replication yes yes so proofreading we have uh, seen this as a lost thing right so in that first let's see the option so a primase b dna polymerase 1 c ligase and d dna polymerase 3 okay so this primase it is a enzyme that synthesizes rna primer right so it is going to synthesize a rna primer rna primer so now when you uh, come back to this option b dna polymerase one it is actually it is involved in the removal of this rna primer so removal of rna primer so if the dna replication is at the last stage this rna primer should be removed from the dna stand so this rna polymerase one will be removing that okay then coming to the ligase actually it is an enzyme obviously that catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds okay between uh, uh, adjacent nucleotides in the dna stand okay so the correct option is dna polymerase 3 is uh, used for the proofreading in the dna replication okay so it is going to check whether it is correct or wrong the coded nitrogenous bases whether it is right or wrong it is going to strictly noted by the dna polymerase 3 yes let's move to the next question the primer and dna replication yes we'll see the last option first enzyme joining nucleotide of new stands actually it is a ligase it is going to join right that small deoxyribonucleotide polymer actually it is they have asked primer right it is not a primer so deoxyribonucleotide in the sense it is a dna nucleotide it is a strand of dna nucleotide so this is also wrong that is they have given this dna nucleotide helix destabilizing protein actually destabilizing protein is a helicase which is used to unwind right that is helicase so the option e a small ribonucleotide polymer yes so this is the ribonucleotide in the sense rna nucleotide primer okay so option e is correct the reason behind the anti parallel strand of dna is so we know that dna is having a anti parallel strands so that is 5 dash 2 3 dash and 3 dash 2 Phi dash. Yes, it is going to be the anti-parallel. Why it is anti-parallel? The first thing is these two strands are joined by the which bonds? Yes, correct. It is a hydrogen bonds, right? So it has the high level of stability achieved in an anti-parallel configuration because the DNA needs a stability, right? so if it is parallel hydrogen bonds would not be possible okay so because it is anti parallel hydrogen bonds are formed between the adenine and thymine with the two hydrogen bonds guanine and cytosine with the three hydrogen bonds yes three hydrogen bonds and two hydrogen bonds yes so here the right option is hydrogen bonds so this is the secret behind the anti parallel stance of the dna so because dna is anti parallel that's why it is have the high stability okay so the next question hershey and chase experiment was based on the principle of yes can you guess the answer 
so that hershian chase is nothing but that the uh, bacteriophage experiment right so finally they found that something is going to transform right so here the correct answer is it is the principle of transformation okay so the next question is what is the nature of the strands of the dna duplex so they are asking about the dna duplex right so let's see the option okay anti parallel and complementary right so what do you mean by complementary if a is present its complementary uh, basis is t obviously it is going to pair with the t so that is the complementary right if it is g it is going to pair with only c okay in the dna okay coming to the option b identical and complementary no it is not going to be identical both the strands is not going to be identical yes the c option is anti parallel and not complementary no it is going to be complementary so now it is also wrong and option d it is dissimilar and non complementary actually it is a complementary so this is also wrong so now here the correct option is a anti parallel and complementary so read the following statement and choose the correct option okay now let's read the statement the a statement is nitrogenous basis is linked to the pentose sugar that is called as a n glycosidic bond yes that is right and coming to the p phosphate group is linked with the yes obviously it is linked with the oh group of the nucleotide through phosphoester linkage yes that is right and then c two nucleoside or linked through 3 dash 5 dash n glycosidic linkage no it's a nucleotide right that too that too in the phosphodiester bond right that is also wrong yes negatively charged dna is wrapped around positively charged histones yes that is right the chromatin that is more densely packed no the chromosome is going to be densely packed right so that is also wrong so now yes a b and uh, d is right so they have asking only the wrong right so they have given the options as what are the things are wrong so now c and e is wrong so here the c option is right dna contains nucleobases so nucleobases is nothing but that is nitrogenous bases okay so this nucleobases is also called as a nitrogenous bases okay okay fine so the removal of which among these form a dna sample will not significantly affect the length of the dna okay so they are asking if we remove something so okay so if we remove uh, any one thing from this three that is nucleobases sugar and phosphate which is not going to affect the length of the dna okay so obviously this phosphate and sugar is here right it is arranged alternatively so if we cut this if we cut this phosphate and sugar obviously it is going to affect the length of the dna right so coming to this nucleobases it is it is going to be attached here right so if we remove this its length is not going to get affected okay yes so here the thing is nucleobases okay so if we remove the nucleobases the dna sample length is not going to get affected wow again a problem yes in the double stranded dna molecule the percentage of cytosin is 18 okay they are asking the percentage of adenine okay yes we'll equate this a plus g plus c plus t will be equal to 100 they have given the value for cytosine okay cytosine is 18 so if c c will be equals to g right i am going to apply g as also 80 so t will be equal to 100 okay so what they are asking they are asking the adenine value right so i am going to replace this t as a so i am writing 2a so then 18 plus 18 it is going to be 36 it will be equal to 100 so 2a will be equal to 100 minus 36 so 2a will be if it is 100 minus 36 it will be 64 and a will be 
64 divided by 2. So now if you divide, you will be getting 32. Okay, now the A value is 32%. So option A is correct. Let's move to the next question. Yes, which one of the following pairs of nitrogen bases of nucleic acid is wrongly matched with category mentioned against it? Yeah, it is the same question, but uh, the same question will be asked in the uh, different uh, way. Okay, you have to be very clear with that. So, already we know that purines and pyrimidines, okay, that is adenine and guanine, right? Here, cytosine, thymine, urease. Fine. So, they have asked which is wrongly matched. Okay. So, adenine guanine is purines, right? And adenine, thymine. So, thymine is a pyrimidine. That is wrong. Thymine, uracil is a pyrimidine, right? Uracil, cytosine is also the pyrimidine. Yes, the wrongly matched is B. That is adenine. Uh, thymine is not a purines. Actually, adenine is a purine. Thymine is a pyrimidine. Yes, yeah, it is a very, very, very important thing. So, you should not get confused in the Chargaff's rule. Okay, so A plus G will be equal to C plus T plus C. Okay, so A will be equal to T and G will be equal to C. So, if you are very clear with it, definitely will be getting good marks in this chapter. Okay, so they will be asking problems also in this. So, here the correct option is C. The next question is about nucleotide arrangement in DNA can be seen by? Yes. So, if you remember in the DNA structure, I taught you the DNA structure, right? So, there are two scientists named Franklin and Welkin. So, they took X-ray diffraction of uh, diffraction pattern of the DNA using this X-ray crystallography. Okay. So this is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. Yes, DNA guy rays, the enzyme that participates in the process of DNA replication is a type of. So, this DNA guy rays actually will be helping the replication in the prokaryotic organism. So, in prokaryotes. So, this DNA guy rays is used to release the tension during the replication. Release tension. So, can you find from this option which is going to release tension in the eukaryotic? So, this everything is from the eukaryotic. Okay. So, now let's see the D option that is DNA polymerase. Okay. So, this, this will be used for the synthesis of the new stance. Fine. So, coming to the DNA ligase, it is going to join the DNA. Okay. In Okazaki fragment, it is going to seal it. And this reverse transcriptase is not going to involve in this DNA replication itself because it is going to uh, change this, uh, get the DNA. It is going to make the complementary DNA from the RNA. That is the reverse transcript. That is not going to be there. Yes, in the eukaryotic DNA replication, the DNA topo isomerase is used to release the tension. So now A is the right option. Semi-conservative replication of DNA was first demonstrated in. So, I have already explained about this Messelson and Stark experiment. Okay. So, in this experiment, so what they did? So, they took the isotopes like uh, N15 heavy and N14, right? So, they did this experiment in the bacteria. That is... E. coli. Okay, so here the correct option is B. 